Good afternoon. Welcome to the Joy Business Report. Coming up, Ghana Investment Promotion Center links increase in investor interest to the country securing an international monetary fund a program. We will hear from the CEO of um, the Chamber, Yofi Grant, and Chairman of National Development Planning Commission blames bad contractual agreements for Ghana's high capital flights in the extractive sector. Also in this bulletin on today's Joy Business Journal, we will hear from basket weavers in the Upper East Region calling for some attention to make the business attractive. We have details of these and many more shortly. Company. I am Pius Kuju Baka. Let's now look at our stories. And the Ghana Investment Promotion Center has linked the surge in investor interest in the economy to the country, securing a program with the International Monetary Fund. The economy sank to its lowest point in 2021, forcing some investors to sell their Ghana bonds, while some donor partners froze funding to the country. But chief executive of the center, Yofi Grant, says the fund program has given some optimism to the investors about the outlook for the economy. I dare say that concluding with the IMF gave quite a number of uh, investors the confidence that, well, yeah, I mean, this is a country that is on, on the track to ensure. Did you uh, see any uptick in, in the you know, this movement? We saw FDI numbers that surprised us, above $2 billion. Yeah. And it's because of the country's position. Now that we've um, signed off with the IMF, I mean, when I go out, a lot of investors don't ask that question anymore. They just assume that, well, yeah, you are doing the right things to ensure that your economy becomes more stable and has more opportunity, which can be accessed. So it, but it I think, is helped. Yes, it has helped. Yofi Grant is the chief executive of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center speaking there. Now, the chairman of the National Development and Planning Commission, Professor George Jan Bafo, has blamed bad contractual agreements by successive governments for the high rate of capital flights in the country's natural resource sector. According to him, the continuous adoption of outdated contracts with disincentive conditions such as the stability clause contributes to the high rate of capital flights in the extractive sector. He made the remarks at the launch of a report put together by Professor Luhans Indikuma of the University of Massachusetts Amherst, which stated that Ghana lost about $50 billion through capital flights in the cocoa and gold sectors in the last five decades. The incidence of capital flight, especially in gold, and for that matter, it's not only in gold, you know, a lot of our minerals, including oil, I think to a large degree is our own making because of the outmoded agreements that we have had with these corporations. There is a section in these agreements which normally is referred to as a stability clause. And this stability clause says that, you know, the corporations can keep all the foreign exchange that they earn outside this country. It is written in black and white, including oil. So for them, the only thing that they may bring in will be the one that will be used to pay their little royalties and then uh, what they will use to pay their workers and then the taxes. All the rest, by law, they can keep it outside this country. Chairman of the National Development Planning Commission, Professor George Jan Bafour there. Now, fintech company Aza Finance has stressed that payment systems across the African continent can be enhanced through collaboration and partnerships. According to the company, which operates payment systems in over 115 countries in the world, Africa can be the biggest beneficiary if payment platforms are harmonized. Speaking to Joy Business after a network event with companies and business owners, country director for Ghana and West Africa at Aza Finance. Nana Yawusu Banahini said the company will continue to expand its work on the continent to provide good services to exporters and importers. Well, I think our uniqueness is that we have the infrastructure already. Over the 10 years we've existed in the continent, we've learned a lot of operational challenges and how to resolve it. And also we have deep liquidity in terms of local currencies in different markets. So I think we are best placed to work with banks and fintechs to be able to overcome this challenge. So I think information security is very key to us. We are PCI DSS certified and then we are the only company in Africa that was recently certified with ISO 2701 2022 certification. So I think security is core to our mandate and what we do. I think people should expect that we are collaborating keenly with banks and fintech across the markets in Africa and work with different regulatory 
uh, bodies to to bring the the dream of cross border payments, seamless cross border payment to life. Country director for Ghana in West Africa at Aza Finance. Now, the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industries urging businesses to encourage their staff, particularly men, to screen their breast cancer. According to the Chamber, a healthy population will help businesses grow and add value to the economy. Speaking to Joy Business after a breast screening symposium, the Great Accra Regional Manager of the Chamber, Daniel Osei Togbo, said a productive economy thrives on a healthy population. Me being here, I think that would also encourage other men to come. I've just finished my screening and I'm good and I'm encouraging more men to also come and have their screening done as well so that we can all have a good health because health is wealth. Once you have life, you can concentrate on your business and your work and that's what the Chamber is all about, encouraging businesses to grow, encouraging the links between businesses to grow and also grow our economy. So by that, we encourage businesses to get screened, get their staff, all employees to get screened for early detection saves life. Moving on to some other stories, musician and executive director of Carbon AV and Amy Africa, Kojo Sobo, is advocating a fundamental shift in the corporate world. He underscores the critical need for companies to employ marketing managers who have a high level of exposure and openness to recognize and endorse groundbreaking ideas. Speaking in a new episode of Celeb Bees, hosted by Amelie Dusu, Mr. Sobo explained that the lack of recognition on the part of marketers hinders creatives from assessing the necessary financial support for their initiatives. And a lot of people who are not exposed, they are used to the normal things, and it runs across our corporate. Even some of the marketing managers, when you go to them to let them do your proposal, do your presentation, some of the things you say, it's over their head. They don't get it. You know, if you mention some figures, that's when the conversation ends in their mind. Like, where they do, it's going to do, no, no. Mm-hmm. Then it just ends there. Why is the person asking for this money? How can we leverage if we're able to give him this money? Yeah. How can we as a brand leverage to be able to make the most out of this investment? Celeb Bees is a new show that seeks to explore the entrepreneurial ventures of celebrities in Ghana and beyond. And you can watch the full episode of Celeb Bees this Saturday at 5 p.m. on Joy Prime and on Sunday at 9 p.m. on the Joy News channel. You're still listening to the Joy Business Report. Basket weavers in the Upper East Region are calling for some support to make the trade attractive as they celebrate this year's annual Bogatanga International Craft and Arts Festival. In our Friday Journal today, Eben Sabute has been engaging some of them on how the business has been impacting on their livelihoods. The hidden treasure of the Upper East region is still yet to be tapped, despite the potential it holds in generating more foreign exchange to the country. The arts and craft business is a thriving sector, but with little government attention or support in order to make it the gold mine for the people. The Bogatanga Craft Village built in the 80s is begging for renovation as it continues to serve as a market for many small-scale businesses in the sector. The celebration of the annual Bogatanga International Craft and Art Fair, BICAF, has come at a good time to highlight the potential in the basket and craft industry as well as the culture of the people. This BICAF, mm-hmm. we three days were organized for it. Then you send your products there, you meet outside people, then they'll come and then, but you make networks. When I joined the BICAF, it told me, at first, I always spend the money anyhow. But two bakers, they, they train me how to keep my money. Under the theme driving the economic transformation agenda of the Upper East Ridge in the post-COVID era through arts and crafts, this year's edition promises to elevate the conversation on the industry from just providing livelihood to the people to positioning the region as the beacon of hope for small-scale businesses in Ghana. Municipal Chief Executive for the Bogatanga Municipal Assembly, Rex Asanga, has this message for investors and businesses that will take advantage of such platforms. When the name Bogatanga is mentioned, everybody's mind is on the burger basket. That's the first thing. And then there's the smokes as well. When I'm welcoming you, I'm also telling you about the burger basket, uh, which has become an international craft, piece of craft that we are trying to market. Organizers of the event, Trade Aid Integrated, use the initiative to project the positive side of the industry as the main employment source and income earner for the region apart from farming. 
Director for Trade Aid, Nicholas Abukera, has this to say. We felt that we should be able to support the industry to sustain it so that it continues to provide livelihoods for the people. The exhibitors are calling for more support to sustain the program and make it a flagship selling point for the region. Government can do a lot for the basket industry. When you look at this, our baskets, it brings a lot of revenue to the country. When they are exporting it, they pay tax. And when government look into these things that we are doing, I think it will help us. The government will help us to export our business, to our products. All roads will be leading to the Bogatanga Jubilee Park for the exhibition of local produce that has the potential to turn around the country's economy. Champagne for my pain. I stay in my lane. Every day is my pain. And that's all for the Joy Business Report. But before we go, the Ecobank Salary Account is a special account designed for workers of all income brackets desirous of receiving their salaries through Ecobank. With the Ecobank Salary Account, you are guaranteed all the benefits of a normal savings or current account plus many more. Ecobank Salary Account gives workers free life insurance cover of up to 10,000 cities, 24-7 access to cash and e-banking services, internet and mobile banking services, high interest on savings, no minimum balance, ability to save through the Ecobank Save As You Spend, a unique feature that helps customers to save and invest. Remember, the insurance policy covers death, permanent or temporary disability, critical illness, hospitalization, retrenchment, and more. Savings or current account holders at Ecobank do not have to close their existing accounts to enjoy the numerous benefits of the Ecobank salary account. Just ask your branch to switch your existing account to the Ecobank salary account. Non-account um, holders should approach any Ecobank branch and ask for the Ecobank salary account. Switch your salary account today and enjoy amazing benefits at Ecobank. Call Ecobank to free on 0800 003 225 whenever, wherever for further details. Ecobank, the Pan African Bank. I am Pius Kojubaka. Thanks for your company. Game plan is next to enjoy. <laughs>